Welcome to Author Author. My name is Sven Michael Davison, and today I have a return of Paula Margulies. She is a book publicist. Today she'll be talking about how she got into book publicity, and also she'll be talking about the four books she wrote, including a how to on publicizing your book. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and take it away. You have a book called, you know, The Tao of uh, Book Publicity, and um, I take it. That book covers pretty much a lot of what we're talking about, and, and then some. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, wrote, then, I wrote that book because I was getting asked so many questions. I thought I should just write a book that answers those basic questions. About 16 chapters came from my blog. The other half of the book came from just filling out those questions that I get asked the most. It's kind of a short little reference book for people that want to try doing publicity themselves or want to figure out what working with a publicist would be like. Did you do your own publicity for that book? Did you? <laughs> I did, yeah. but yeah. not. A, I, I, if you go online, there aren't a lot of reviews on my books. I just don't have time to work on my own books. It's yeah. terrible. But when my first book, I had an agent for that book. He sold it to a small press and I actually traveled. I went to Alaska. I went to Wyoming. I went to it's just a bunch. I, I did a lot of publicity for that book. The book publicity book actually sells pretty well on its own online. Whenever I speak at conferences, usually that book will sell. But my business isn't really writing books. It's doing publicity and teaching. That's what I do for a living. My writing is been more just for my own education. Like when I wrote my novel, can I write a novel? What's it like to write a novel? If I'm working with authors, I should know that. And that's the thing with authors. Everyone has their own reason for writing a book and their own reason for promoting or not promoting it. Like I don't actively promote mine. I just haven't had the time. Maybe I will once I retire or something, then maybe I'll start writing books that I'll actively promote. I've taught marketing classes and publicity classes and then I'll bring the book in. Um, but mostly what I teach is intro to business and business communications and um, human relations in business. So more of the interactive skills, uh, along with writing and speaking and that kind of thing. So I used to teach like three or four classes at a time and it got really exhausting after, I did it for 20 years. I'm down to one a semester. How did you get into book publicity in the first place? I was an English major in college and then when I got out of school, I got offered two teaching positions. One was in Calexico on the border here, but the students spoke mainly Spanish and I didn't speak any Spanish. And one was to be a drama teacher at a high school in Garden Grove. I had no experience really on either side. So I went into industry and I I worked as a technical writer for a number of years for Delco, which was a division of General Motors. And from technical writing, I went into documentation supervision for startups. You know, when you work for a startup, you do everything. So I wrote their annual reports and I wrote their marketing material. And that's how I kind of segued into marketing and PR. Then I started working for larger companies, medical device manufacturers, and did mostly marketing. Then I worked for eight years as a, for a nonprofit. So I kind of learned that whole nonprofit arena, which is great for teaching because I've had my foot in so many aspects of business that it's so great for the students because I've worked all of it, nonprofit, for-profit, marketing, you name it. I did the eight years of nonprofit work and really got burned out. It's a lot of work I for so. very little money. And I said to my husband one day, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just fried. And he said, well, then quit. He was really good about it. And I said, okay. And he goes, you know what you're going to do? And I said, no. But I, I went in and handed him my notice. And that day, <laughs> to get back to book publicity. I got a call from a former boss at one of the companies I had worked for as a marketing director. He called and said, hey, I just wrote a book and you're really good at marketing and PR. Would you help me promote my book? So I promoted his book and people saw that and started calling me and pretty soon I just started doing freelance book publicity wow. work. That's what I've done for like the last 12, 15 years. But I've worked with public with authors who've been published by the big publishing houses, HarperCollins, Random House. Oftentimes, especially new authors that get picked up by those, you know, their agents sell their books to the publishers, they'll give them some limited publicity, but most of their publicity dollars are spent on the big name authors. Yeah. So a lot of those authors would call me once the publishing house stopped doing anything for them. So I've worked on that side and then as self-publishing became more the thing. Then I started doing more self-published authors, but I still have a mix of both. I have to say. Have you noticed a, a general trend, though? I mean, as far as your clients go, like say, let's you know, back when you started, it was pretty much all traditionally published, and then you know, I would think there at some point the scales tipped more to self-publishing, or do you feel it's still fifty-fifty? Or there's still a mix out there, I'd say, because I have some clients who've been picked up by bigger publishers. They've done two or three books, and then they've sold their or they've sold the rights to the next ones. 
they've gotten picked up. I've had some like that. So they've gone both ways, you know, from self to traditional, from traditional. I have some that are hybrid authors who were traditionally published and then decided to self-publish and some who are only self-published. So kind of a mixed bag. I think in the days when there were agents and sell, agents selling books to publishing publishers, there was a lot of vetting going on. Those agents wouldn't sell books unless those books were books they knew their publishers would take for the most part. I mean, a lot of agents can't sell books. Most of them have a good read on the publishing industry and know what's going to sell. And those publishing houses, for all the bad press they've gotten, the big publishers back then had staff editors who did nothing but edit. Those books were designed properly. They were edited properly properly. If they had publicists in-house, they were promoted properly. With self-publishing, people write books and they know none of that. And they haven't bothered to educate themselves on the business of publishing a book. That's one thing. When I had my agent, my first book, he made me write eight new chapters to that book. And I was oh. like, what? It's perfect the way it is. No, it's not. And he was right. You know, kicking and screaming, he was right. I went, I ended up writing and rewriting and doing what he said. That's what an agent in a big publishing house do for you. If you're on your own, nobody's going to do that for you, but you still need that. You still need someone to say, hey, you need eight more chapters in this book, or hey, you need to you know, have an editor rework this copy, or hey, you need to go maybe learn more about plot development and story and character development and that kind of thing. All of a sudden, people were selling books, self-published authors, a few were getting some headway and some publicity for it and everyone thought, oh, I can do that too. And that industry just exploded and it's changed the way we buy and sell books now. And Amazon had a lot to do with that too, with making those self-published books available. If you're a self-published author, you are a publisher as well as an author. So you have to kind of know that too. And a lot of authors don't want to learn it. And that's where I say, if you don't want to learn it, fine, but hire someone to help you people who can help you with the aspects of it you don't want to take on yourself or educate yourself about. I mean, back in the day, most of my authors, I was putting on book tours in bookstores. You know, that's what they wanted. They wanted those book signings, and that's where people came in to buy books. Well, now people don't buy books in bookstores. They buy them online, so it's different. Um, so we've had to change how we market books and how we help people market books, publicity people. And the news cycle, too. I mean, just the way we, we handle news and media and... It's really, ch everything's changed now, you know, from 15 years ago when I started doing the publicity stuff to this. There are lots of different ways to approach promotion too. I have one client, she came to me with her first novel and this, this person now has a whole line of books out. But she and her husband, her husband was a bookstore owner and very focused on promoting their books. And um, when I first worked with her, we did some TV and radio and that kind of, I did everything she wanted to do. But that summer, after we finished promotion of her book, she took her book, she bought a, um, an RV, <laughs> and she and her husband drove across the country. They hit every RV park they could in America and every library they could, and they dumped off books, and she spoke in libraries, and she gave books to people in RV parks. She talked in RV parks. Who would have thought, you know, that the... But she created a following for herself, and I think she did it a second summer, and then she retired it, the idea, because it was, it was tough. The RV kept breaking down, and she had all these adventures, but it gave her a lot of fuel for her blog, too. That's why I tell authors who are new, too, is to try everything and see what gives you the most bang for your buck and then kind of, you know, carve out that niche if that's working. The more you put yourself out there, the more opportunities are going to come your way. I used to sell my books at powwows for every year. And I love doing that. I mean, I just love being at the powwows all day, you know, but just meeting people. And I would see people would come back and say, hey, I read Coyote Heart. You know, that's a great book. And they'd stand there and hawk your books for, you that's know, awesome. I mean, it can be, it can be really great, you know, especially if you find your little community of people, but it's also good, you know, we have a good community of authors here too, so it's a good way to connect with those people. Um, yeah. That's really important. Well, Paula, thank you for your time. <laughs> You're Appreciate welcome. it. <laughs> Please subscribe so my dad can make more videos like this. Thank you.